So good afternoon. I would like to begin uh, uh, thanking the invitation from the European Liberal Forum and the Movimento Liberal Social, namely Igor Calteiro, which is the individual organizer. And uh, I will present a paper I, I have uh, wrote with uh, some uh, researcher from Estonia, which is called uh, Katskivistik. And uh, it's about uh, uh, value orientations and uh, the use of the left-right divide in five continents. So our uh, goals are, are the following. We want to uh, describe and explain how, how left-right recognition at the individual level and the country level in around 20, 70 countries in five continents. The five continents are these. Where we'll be split in America in North and South America, we count two. Then we have Europe, and then we have Africa and Hong Kong. It's only for some analysis we have Hong Kong, not for every, every each and every analysis. That's the first uh, objective of the paper. The second objective is to explain how well anchored in the in in value orientations, which is a, a set of of questions about values political values, socio-political values, how well anchored are these uh, values on the, on the left-right uh, uh, divide, and uh, we want to see what explains variation both at the individual level and at the country level. In here it's a, a smaller subset of countries because we, we, the, the questions were not asked in all the countries. The data we are using is from the Comparative National Election Project, which is a, a multinational uh, study, the, which is uh, the, the, the international headquarters are in the, um, in the Ohio State University in, in the United States, and it's uh, run by the international coordinator, uh, Richard Gunter and uh, Paul Allenbeck, both from Ohio. And uh, basically this is, uh, post-election mass surveys, representatives of the adult population in each country and year, because in some countries we have more than one year. Of course, it's always election year. So that was basically at the macro level for some cases, namely for left-right recognition, we have 2021 cases, or it's country election. And uh, for the, 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 the relationship between values and left rights of placement, we have around 14, 15 cases. So here are the countries we will be using in this uh, uh, analysis. And we, here we divided the countries in uh, uh, using basically two variables. The age of the democratic regime, and so we have three categories. So the long consolidated democracies, this is with 41 years since the last uh, political transition or, or more, it's Italy, the US, and then a middle-aged democracies where we include Portugal in 2005 and Greece and Spain, and then the, 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 the set is uh, overrepresented with new democracies. We have both uh, Hong Kong, which is not a democracy, and, but we have Spain, Mozambique, uh, Bulgaria, Chile, Hungary, South Africa, um, Mexico, and Uruguay, and Argentina. So it's a, a very diverse uh, set of countries, and this is very interesting uh, in terms of uh, seeing if the left-right divide is recognized, recognized worldwide, and if the correlates of uh, of this divide are the same or not across the world, and what explains variation both across individuals and across countries. The second variable is the, the level of education, but I will skip that because so. In terms of methods, I will use basically, uh, at the individual level will be uh, binary logistic and uh, ordinary least square regressions, and at the macro level I use a procedure called as two-step hierarchical regressions. So the theory in terms of left-right recognition, we, this is, we ask the people, the, here is uh, people in politics talk about left and right. Here we present you a scale. 
that goes from one left to 10 right, and then we see what individuals are able to locate themselves in the scales and which individuals are not. So if those who can locate themselves on, on the scale, they, they, they recognize the divide. Those that don't locate themselves on the scale don't recognize the divide. So at the individual level, what we expect is uh, where we find more cognitive sophistication. This is more education, more political interest, older people, uh, also more party identification, media these people are expected to be, to recognize more the left-right divide. And to explain variation at the country level, we expect that uh, the recognition of the left-right divide is uh, higher in um, uh, long consolidated democracies than in new democracies where the freedom of press is uh, stronger, and this is measured by the indicators of, from the Freedom House, and well, where the, the, the level of education in the country is higher, the aggregate level. And finally, because we also have the, the, the left-right recognition for parties' locations, and here we expect that uh, larger parties are more easily recognized than smaller parties. So I skip the, the hypothesis and I pass to the first description because uh, we, we, this is basically the idea. I don't, I don't go too much. If you want, we can discuss the hypothesis then. But here is the distribution of the people that can place themselves in the scale. So the second column, in the first column, you have the country. Uh, and then you have the, the, the percentage of uh, persons in each country that can place themselves in the scale. So the scale is a 10-point scale from 1 to 10. And uh, basically, uh, some people argue that uh, some respondents might use the center of the scale as a kind of a, uh, avoiding no answer. So we, we, we did a, a second treatment in the fourth column uh, collapsing the false centuries. This is uh, point 0.5 and 6 in the, in the scrutiny. Of the, these are in the, the scale has no center. The center is 5.5 if you have a 110. So this is, uh, we, we collapsed uh, 5 and 6. So here what you can see is that basically you can have the, 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 the long consolidated democracies are more at the top and uh, uh, the, 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 the new democracies are more concentrated at the bottom. For example, US, Greece, Spain, and here you have Mexico, Argentina, Hong Kong, South Africa, some deviation, of course, this is not complete well uh, thing because you have US 2004 here also. And you have also at the top some countries from Latin America like Uruguay in 1994 or Chile in 2000, which are pretty close to the uh, Western European uh, pattern, let's so, so to say. So let's pass to, and, and here the, the, the distribution is a bit different, but basically the same major trend is, is the, the, the major picture is the same. So I won't lose much time with this. So now let's pass to the explanation at the micro level, this is, we want to know which individual, which individuals are more, a higher probability of recognizing the left-right divide, and which individuals have a lower probability of recognizing the divide at the individual level. So here we have the regression equation, and you can see that this is for the all countries taken together, because I cannot present you with separate equations, otherwise this will be 100 slides. So what you can see is, um, as we expected, uh, more educated people uh, do have uh, a higher probability of recognize, recognizing the left-right divide. The same with political interest and age. The, for age, the, the, the reference group is the younger people. This is... Um, 18, uh, 29. 
So these are all positive correlations. Uh, for a subset of countries, we also had media exposure and party identification. So I show the, 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 regre the, the regression equation for these smaller subset of countries. And what we can see here is that in this case, age has no effect, but media exposure. So people that are more exposed to the media, they uh, have a higher probability of recognizing the left-right divide, and also the people there that have a, a, a stronger sense, is more attached to, to a party, they also have a, more, a higher probability of recognizing the left-right divide. And these are the two more important variables in explaining variation at individual level. So now I pass to uh, explanation. It's political interest. So the question is, how interested are you in, in, in political issues? Well, I don't remember the exact wording, but it's uh, how interested in politics are you? Uh, very much interest, somewhat interest, uh, not, not at all interest. So it's a scale. So this is a scale. Uh, for education is a, a, um, also an ordinal variable. Media exposure is an index of uh, uh, TV exposure, radio, and, and, and newspapers. And for the strength of party identification, it's a question about do you feel yourself close to any party? And if, you, if the person says yes, we ask them a scale, how attached are you to the party? So here we contrast the people that are more attached to the people that is uh, no identification or, or lower attachment. So here are the results at the macro level. So now we want to explain uh, variation across countries. Are there any countries where left-right recognition is higher? And why is that? That's what we want to, to explain here. So I have um, several because uh, because the dependent variable is was in fact left right recognition and left right recognition collapsing the false centrists and then we have also we asked also to, for the, the respondents to locate the major party in each country in the left right scale and the two major parties so we have four equations but what we can see here is that um, for example when we don't collapse the centrists uh, uh, Left-right recognition is higher where the freedom of press is higher because the, the index for the freedom house is lower values. It's more, more freedom of, of the media. So that's why the, the coefficient is negative. And then you have for collapsing, uh, when we collapse the false centuries, the, the, the equation is... Um, the year of the democratic regime, so that the long consolidated democracies have more uh, recognition. And then for party, also freedom of press work in this direction. We use the um, uh, a procedure, robust standard errors procedure to, to correct for heterogeneity in the variance in, uh, of, the, of, the, of the coefficient. So this is a very uh, well, uh, robust result. So I, I will skip this, and I, now I pass to the part two, which is in the second part of, of this paper, we want to see uh, are the left-right uh, identities of the citizens in these countries uh, related to their policy preferences? We could say this, and we call it vol value orientations, but in a way this is also the underlying uh, dimension behind um, policy preferences. So here we have a, a set of, of values that uh, Richard Gunter and Paul Allenbeck and the people back in the Comparative National Election Project called the West European template for sociopolitical values. So it's the major the major value conflicts in, in, in Europe and in, in the, the Western world. So it's traditional conservatives uh, versus liberalism in the individual level. I think I have the, 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 the I show the, 
some examples of what we are contrasting here. Also, socioeconomic liberalism versus socialism or social democratic intervention in the, in the economic sphere. And then we have also materiali materialism and, and post-materialism, so the new political issues. And also uh, uh, some set of indicators contrasting what we could call nationalism or xenophobia versus multiculturalism. And additionally, some uh, value uh, indicators were used to measure the possibility of different non-Western uh, non -Western value conflicts. I will show you later. So for example, for the traditional conservatism versus liberalism, one of the questions is about law and order versus civic liberties or attitudes toward abortion, which I know is uh, topics very, very, where the liberals are very, very fond of. So this is, uh, yeah, that's, that's conservative versus liberalism, yeah, the, the, the old. But then we have also uh, issues confronting socioeconomic liberalism versus social democracy. And here we have questions that uh, this is a scale where, where at each end point we have uh, one preference, for example, uh, economic incentives, what do you prefer? Economic incentives for, 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 for uh, or equality. You want privatization or you want public ownership of the means of production? You want tax reduction or better public service? So it's the, the, in each question the, the people is confronted with these kind of um, questions and options in terms of value orientations and policy preferences. So in terms of materialism, materialism and post-materialism is the, the question of economic growth uh, versus a, a environmental protection, or also something that I know it's uh, very, uh, the D66 are very concerned about more citizen participation in political decision making versus uh, technocratic uh, decision making. And finally, in terms of this Western template, the, the question used is, is it better for society if different uh, rational or ethnic groups maintain their distinct costumes and traditions, or if they should uh, adopt the, the country's national customs and traditions? So it's a kind of a national in the multiculturalism. And finally, for the non-Western template, we used some, some questions because we have people from Mexico, from South Africa, from Mozambique, and they say, well, that uh, West European template, uh, it's not, it's not, does that meaning, it doesn't have much meaning here. But they proposed some questions for, for us to use and to see, perhaps, perhaps we find that the left-right divide in uh, Argentina it's not related with uh, nation, uh, socialism versus economic liberalism, but it's related with other issues. Let's see what these issues are. So we ask here what they call government parent. Uh, so in the, in the, the, the people, are, people are like children and so the government should take care of them like a parent. This is in a way related, oh this is, uh, A bateria vai ficar sem bateria? Uau! Não sei. Ela, acho que não. Mas ela foi já buscar ali. So, and, and, and of course, uh, the, other, the, 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 the other hand point is government is an employee and the people are the bosses who control the government. So it's a, it's a way related with individual responsibility and... Uh, can go and another one is uh, another question is about uh, they call they call it as a kind of the nickname of this uh, indicator is government well-being so that it's the opposition Gov government should be uh, the main responsible for for people's well-being or uh, the other the other option is individual responsibility and finally there is uh, an issue about conflict. If uh, the, the, the respondent were confronted, if they 
if they think that conflict should be avoided at all costs in, 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 in society, or if conflict is a normal thing. So, so we want to see how well anchored uh, uh, left-right self-placement is on this uh, set of value orientation, and we want to explain these both at the micro level and at the macro level. At the macro level, we, we expect that uh, where uh, there is longer democratic consolidation and also where the, the clarity of policy alternatives presented by the parties to the voters is more, well, where, it, where there is more polarization, the citizens should have a clear mind, a more clear mind, and also the freedom of press. We expect then in countries with more freedom of press there is a stronger relation between policy preference and the left-right divide. So let's see, I skip the hypothesis. First, some description, and this is the average self-placement in the left-right scale, which goes from one left to 10. And here I, I, I present you the countries for which we have data in different periods. And so the, the, the mean for all countries is 5.5, which is the exact center of the scale. So this is the center. Hmm? And 10 is right. So the, the center is 5.5. There is no center in the scale, OK? Yeah, let me, let me present the data. So here we see that the, the countries that are uh, more to the right, are Mozambique, Hong Kong, South Africa, Greece, US, 2000, uh, 1992, Mexico, Argentina, US 2004, Portugal is right in the center. So of course, some of these countries, you can say, well, they, 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 it, it's, it's curious that you find Mozambique, which is run by a, a post-communist, uh, I don't know, or even South Africa, because it's run by a, uh, a post-communist nationalist party, but uh, that's, that's what we find. They are much to the right. Of course, you can ask, that's, that's the following step. Does, does left and right mean the same things all over the world? He, he can, he, it's possible it doesn't mean the same thing, or it's not related with policy preferences. And then we have the countries that are more on the left. Well, where their voters, on average, because this is an average for all the country, of course, this is an average. Here we find Spain, Italy, well, this is expected. There are the countries more to the left. Hungary. <laughs> Hungary. Yeah. Hungary in 2006. I don't know. Well, they have a strong uh, post-communist uh, socialist party, but now they changed. Because you have, sh you have to, uh, it's, there are differences between short-term uh, voting and, and, uh, and, and uh, underlying the uh, more stable uh, value preference and ideological identity. But yeah, you can raise the question about Hungary. Nevertheless, they are almost in the center. The average citizen almost in the center. So in Chile also and, and Greece. The more to the left are the Italy and Spain, which is not, and also Uruguay. Uruguay is also a traditional more to the left country. And, and so, but that, this is only some curiosity. And now we want to explain, first, variation at the individual level. So here what you find, and I, I didn't use here in this part all the set of values to have the same comparison of all the countries, because in some countries they don't ask the same question. So I only used for these regressions the, the, the <coughs> the indicators that were asked in all the countries. So what you see here is that, for example, opposition to, uh, to, to abortion is uh, positively correlated with the right because uh, right-wing pref policy preferences are all the, the higher values. Uh, support for economic incentives are also more correlated with the right support, with law and order, it's more correlated, positively correlated with the right. Uh, reduce, you reduce taxes is also correlated with the right. Um, support for economic growth also correlates with the right, vis-a-vis, -vis, of course, 
environmental protection because this is a trade-off, always a trade-off. No, but the <laughs> well, in a, in a survey, you, you must do this. Otherwise, you end up with strange results. <laughs> you know, you have to have some trade-off, at least some. But the, I, 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 leave, I left this to, to the discussion. But what is more uh, interesting here, or it's at least not expected, is support for, for privatization is in many countries uh, related with the left. So this is unexpected. But in a way, in the post-communist regime, you expect perhaps uh, these, or in, 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 when you have post-colonial societies like uh, South Africa or Mozambique, you might expect these. But So here, what I, I present you is a kind of, uh, um, I present you the countries where value orientations are more important because the, 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 the previous equation is for the all countries together. So it's 2,366 uh, cases. It's all countries together because otherwise I would have a, a lot of slides, not practical. But here I have a kind of uh, summary of the impact of values and social factors on left right displacement. So what you can see here is that in the, let's say, long consolidated European democracies, especially US, Greece, Spain, some deviation here with Argentina, Uruguay, which is, a, and Chile, you have the countries where there is a stronger correlation between left-right orientations and, and, and these uh, West European template of sociopolitical values. On the other hand, in many cases, uh, like Mozambique, also Portugal, Uruguay, Hungary, Mexico, you, what you find is that there is almost no correlation between value policy preferences and left-right. So you, what you end up, uh, people locate themselves on the right, but that, that doesn't mean the same as it means in uh, our countries. Now, finally, explaining cross-country variation, uh, and what we have here, I, I only show you, again, we use the, the robust standard errors procedure because we have uh, very, very few, uh, very few um, number of cases. So what we can find here is, for example, abo the abortion issue, which is, are you, in, are you in favor of abortion liberalization or against? So abortion issue is more important to explain left-right orientations um, in countries where in long consolidated democracies, that's this first, uh, these are the significant impacts are, are, are in bold, and also in the countries where the, 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 the parties, the major parties present clear uh, uh, policy alternatives to the voters, let's say where you have parties that are clearly in favor of abortion liberalization, and parties that are in against, where you have more clarity of uh, policy alternatives, people also, um, in these countries, the abortion issue is more strongly correlated with left-right divide. Uh, also, the, 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 where this is more clear in, this, in the tax, tax reduction versus vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, public services, so here what we can find is that the more, in, more consolidated democracies in, 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 in countries where there is more freedom exp of, of press and uh, in countries where there is um, more clarity in policy alternatives, here you also find uh, that uh, this issue of taxes and public services is more strongly correlated with the left-right divide. So we also find that uh, long consolidated democracies, the, the issue of law and order, the traditional liberalism, conservative, and also the economic growth issue is uh, correlated, positively correlated with uh, freedom of press because freedom of press, the higher values represent lower uh, freedom of press. So just conclusions to, to, to end up, and I will talk to you about the, the, the other non-Western values in the end. 
So left right, left right is widely recognized in all worldwide, but there is significant country variation depending on the age of the democratic regime and the freedom of press. The older the democratic regime and the, the higher the level of press freedom, the higher of left right recognition and party size also counts for uh, recognition of parties location in the left, right, right. So larger parties are easier recognizable. And at the individual level, more educated people, people with more political interest, more media exposure, and more party identification uh, also have or show more higher recognition. The effect of age is not clear because it's variable across countries. So. Uh, I won't lose much time on these. And uh, values. So in terms of values, what we found that is that the social political values, what we call the West European template, have an impact on the left-right divide across the globe. But this impact is stronger in Europe and the US. And also um, the partisan orientations, because this is a control variable, I will skip this. So in terms of values, what we found is that uh, abortion liberalization, tax reduction, and uh, are more important in uh, structuring the left-right divide in long consolidated democracies, more polarized party systems, and more free, the free media systems. But finally, we also find that um, in Africa and in Latin America, especially in South Africa and Mozambique, which are the countries we have, and Argentina, we find that these uh, policy preferences are not, these values are not so well associated with, uh, with, uh, with the left-right divide, but there are other issues that are associated. <laughs> For example, in these countries, uh, uh, left is more associated with governmental protection and acceptance of conflict as a normal issue in, in, in day by day politics, and the contrary for the right, which put more weight on individual responsibility and avoidance of conflict. In Argentina, there is a mix of, of disorientation with traditional social political, social economic values, and in Africa, they are sometimes mixed with attitudes towards abortion, liberalization. And, um, Finally, in the US, we also found that multiculturalism is a strong issue with the left more, uh, more close to the multiculturalism pole. So that's it. And what we found. <laughs>